Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the Zoom meeting. So uh, would somebody like to share what happened during this short meditation? If, you, if you'd like to just uh, wave your hand. I think Kieran would like to. You'd like to go ahead, Kieran? I do. I do. Okay. So it started with a very um, strong feeling of vulnerability, of um, but then quickly, um, yeah. So like thoughts on thoughts, and then quickly it went to a space of uh, very strong energy through the whole body. Um, which uh, yeah so if the if the, if the if there are no not many thoughts if the mind sinks back it goes goes out then there's there was strong very strong energy energy through the body which in one way felt um why felt uh, yeah good in another way it felt very strong like falling into a deep something deep, deep emptiness maybe yeah but the, yeah emptiness full of energy yeah so this is um but not yeah. any thoughts no hardly hardly any thoughts and strong strong energy and Falling a bit of fear, but also like, okay, this is, this is okay. This is, okay. this is good to feel because the fear is something that is to be, is to be felt. Yeah. So it's good to feel. So, I mean, this is uh, something that's very clear if you've been meditating already for some years, but if you're quite new to meditation and to this kind of meeting, the, the key thing to understand is that Kieran is saying that gradually his thoughts disappeared. And as the thoughts disappeared, he experienced a very strong energy going through him. And um, the personal kind of disappeared. There was like no body home anymore. And that can be a little bit scary. <laughs> scary, but nice, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So that's they're like that's it. Yeah, that's it. it. It's like falling. It's falling. It. That's it. Yeah, that's that. It's that's the right thing. That it's uh, like just let let it fall. <laughs> let it feel. Now, let it feel. <laughs> yeah. So now you're talking. Are you getting some thoughts, or are they very much in the background? Very much in the background. Very much in the background. Yeah right good okay thank you okay so uh if you like if somebody else likes to offer um rajan okay go ahead can you speak and then you'll appear on the screen yeah um so i had a similar experience of falling and um yeah there was this moment when you said uh, don't change anything and this uh yeah like the reaction inside was that it was uh it felt like absurd because uh yeah, it would not be possible to change anything anyway. So, yeah, no changing. Right. And, yeah, and at the end, it became like a like an endless, uh, endless space. I would say falling into an endless space, like you know, very, very big. Yeah. Yeah, no, no boundaries really. Yeah, yeah, just enormous, gigantic. <laughs> all right, all right. So this thing about don't try to change anything, 
maybe once again I, I can explain a little bit because if you're fairly experienced you will know that actually in reality there isn't anybody we like to be identified as a somebody with a name you know so this man here in, on the screen now is called Rajan so there is a name but the way he expressed himself he knows that actually there's not really somebody he's not identified with his mind and his body so because he's not identified when I say don't try to change anything uh, he already knows that there isn't anybody who can change anything but if you're again a beginner and um, you haven't had maybe any spontaneous kind of opening where you discovered that you were nobody, then most people are completely identified with their body and mind, their thoughts, and they call themselves me, me. And this me, of course, has a name. So this me is basically a, an illusion. It's a wrong idea. But it's very difficult in the beginning when you start a spiritual life or whether you start a meditation or yoga, it's very difficult to understand that because all your friends and people you meet in the, in the world, in your office, whatever, they all believe they're somebody. And uh, the idea that they're not somebody um, for, for most people is even a little bit strange. So... If you're a beginner, probably you would try naturally to change something because we may have heard that it's not so good to have thoughts. So we might try to change the thoughts. Maybe not so nice thoughts, we try to change them into nice thoughts. Maybe not so nice feelings, we try to change them into nice feelings. Or we try to change everything into nothing. So having spiritual ideas like that also doesn't really help. So the whole effort with regular meditation is that by, by sitting quietly regularly for some time, maybe more than one year, but every day, when this becomes a practice in your life, you will gradually notice that the number of thoughts becomes less and less and less. And you can also notice sometimes uh, there's a gap, so no thoughts for a moment. So that gives you a kind of confidence that you're achieving something from your meditation. And then you gives you the, the energy to continue because it's easy not to continue, it's easy to stop. So when you're beginning, it's very helpful to realize that if you keep watching without trying to change anything, by itself, the thoughts will get less. And you can observe that. And of course, in the beginning of meditation, the beginning of yoga, one of the things that really brings us to do that, well, to do yoga or to do meditation or to do both, is that the thoughts Uh, you're going to come to something very, very beautiful, which is always waiting inside you. And this is your true self. This is, we can call the self. And this is um, <laughs> having a wonderful uh, qualities. So as Rajen was saying, it was, he felt himself as an infinite space, infinite nothing space. <laughs> Kiran was telling about about the energy that he experienced in this empty space. And uh, 
you can experience tremendous peace in this space. You can experience tremendous love. Love not in I love you and you love me, but rather in a, a kind of energetic phenomena, which is perhaps what love really is, a different kind of love from the familiar everyday love. So this is uh, this is a very beautiful, and um, I ask now if there would be somebody else like to share. Okay, I'll have to choose somebody. There was, there was Dion waving his hand, I think. No, I don't think so. How about uh, Nadaraj, one of our younger residents? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the first minutes I spontaneously translated so i just meditated on on translating and then there came an enormous energy or or fear because i don't know maybe because i'm hurt because and what? because i'm hurt like let people hear me or i'm seen just a guess i don't know why yeah, and it gradually, um, I mean, it calmed down, but there was a strong pushing of energy in my in my head, like some, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Yeah, um, my body still is very, very hot. Lots of energy, but... <laughs> uh, okay. So this is one of the kind of miracles that we discovered a year or so ago when we started these Zoom meetings, that uh, not even being in the same space, but rather being connected through this Zoom meeting, you can experience very strong energy phenomena. So this is actually very beautiful because as a group of people, we are supporting each other in going deeper inside. and when. Yeah. Um, yeah, my internet just broke. I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, you didn't hear me. No, it, it just froze. We have maybe some bit technical problems, I think. <clears throat> can you wave if you can hear me? Do you hear me wave? So a lot of people are not waving, so you don't hear me. Back to you, don't hear me? Oh, okay. Okay, so most people hear me. Okay, okay, good. Also die Leute, die mich hören können, die sollen winken. Okay, good, good. Okay, so, uh, so I think tonight I would like to focus on peace. If you keep uh, your eye on the international situation on planet Earth, you will know that we have two wars going on. And we've been following the one in Ukraine for the last year because we have um, close friends who are living in Ukraine, who are Ukrainian. And um, the mother of my children are, is also from Ukraine. And um, for the last year, we've been very touched by this terrible situation between Russia and Ukraine. Terrible because these two countries have been very close. 
they're like brother and sister or two brothers. And many people in um, one country have got part of their family living in the other country, or they've got close friends living in the other country. So for the last year, it's been very tragic to watch these two brother countries at war with each other. So this is something that um, I think has touched everybody in our community because um, until a year ago, well, a bit more than a year ago now, um, we used to regularly go to Kiev and outside Kiev, uh, about one hour outside the center of Kiev, we have a beautiful um, small hotel and a beautiful retreat center in uh, lovely nature. So this has been a tragic war and therefore brings up the subject of peace. It's, the war seems to have become a kind of first world war kind of war where nothing really much is happening, but people are getting regularly killed. So it's not a nice situation. And of course, we can try to imagine some kind of peace. And then uh, since three weeks, there's a new war. And this is now between the people living in Gaza and the people living in Israel. They're every day now engaging more and more deeply in a pretty tragic war, which is not a new war, but an old war that's been going on for, I don't know exactly, but about 50 years. And in these 50 years, there's been several moments when the tension between the Palestinians and the um, Israelis has kind of boiled over, and then they started killing each other. So what's happening now is somehow one more of these several wars that have been going on for the last 50 years. It's a very tragic kind of situation. So, I mean, it seems to me tonight, we really should focus on peace. But I don't really want to talk so much about the political possibilities of peace. But I will talk a bit about that. But I really like to talk about the essence of peace. So if you uh, noticed during the last uh, 50 minutes, uh, maybe some of you came to this meeting from some other situations where you weren't really at peace. Maybe you were busy with something. Maybe you had an unpleasant moment. Maybe you had a very pleasant moment. Whatever it was, when you sat into this meeting, perhaps you didn't really feel at peace. So... I would just like to point out that what we did in the last 15 minutes would have certainly brought some of you into peace. So for me, peace, the true peace, is inside us. There will never be peace on the outside of us. But when we come to our own nature inside us as we just heard from one or two people, when you come to this place inside you, then the overriding experience is in fact peace. Peace in the sense that you have nothing to do. There's nothing to desire. There's nothing to want. You don't need something. But in that moment, you feel completely content and in a way, we might say this is the whole point of the spiritual life, that it's possible to choose in our daily life that peace is our priority. And peace will always bring us to this moment now. So the past was going to disappear and the future hasn't come. So in this moment, we simply, uh, it's simply possible to come to peace. And this peace is also love. The peace and love are 
uh, hand in hand, you can say. These are two ways to express the feeling of coming home, coming to your essential nature. And of course, it's when you have such a moment, then you can't really forget that moment. So even if you're fairly new to the spiritual life, uh, you can still have had some moment where you experienced what I'm talking about. In fact, many people uh, have some kind of moment which comes to them unexpectedly. And this unexpected moment is so deeply touching that in fact, your life starts to change. Because uh, if you come to such a glimpse, to such a moment of peace and love, it's impossible to carry on in the old way of your life anymore. It's simply not possible. You can try it, but you can't forget this wonderful moment when suddenly, <laughs> when suddenly you felt this oneness with everything around you. Suddenly you notice there was no feeling of being separate. Even you could notice that your identification with me, the separate me, me and you, also just disappeared. And sometimes when this happens, people laugh a lot. And the reason they laugh a lot is they, they hear how people are <laughs> they, they hear how people are relating together. And this can be very, very funny. It's like you're listening in a theater. And when you are completely identified with being somebody, and then you meet another person who also thinks they're somebody, and they start to relate together. This can be hilarious if you're simply there in silence. This can be hilarious because people are very seriously believing some kind of um, like a theater play, you know, like a like you come in the theater and and the producer of the play, the director of the play, gives you a script. <laughs> And uh, you learn your part of the script, and then you rehearse together. And then on the day, on the first day of the play, you present the play to an audience. And uh, you can enjoy this play, taking on a character. You, you take on a particular character, and you completely identify with this character. And... Um, you believe that you are this character. You can easily come to believe that you are this character in the theater. And in our daily life, in a similar way to what happens in the theater, we can easily identify it with some kind of character. So we can play this kind of man, or we can play this kind of woman, we can play a good person or a bad person or whatever it is. And of course, the reality is that most of us, we play several characters. You know, we have uh, favorite characters and we play these characters in depending on the, on the situation, depending on who we're relating with or the situation. And um, yeah, this is uh, how we live our life very identified with these different characters. But this is not peace. And the more we are caught up in an identification with some particular character, the more we tend to suffer. So if you don't want to suffer, then we meditate, we do yoga, we do various other kinds of practices. And out of these practices, the effect is that our mind becomes quiet. 
and the identification with the body and the mind becomes less and less until we have maybe a beautiful experience where we come to this peace that I'd like to talk about tonight. This is not so easy. When you listen now to me talking, it maybe sounds rather easy because it's not really complicated. And I know when I look around on this Zoom meeting, there are many people who have had longer times when they came to this inner home, if you like to call it home, this essence, our being, many, many words for this place. And I can see looking on the screen, the many of you know this place. Maybe you're not able to live it every day of your life, but in your memory, you have a strong memory of this place of peace. So in a minute, I'd like to um, ask you if you'd like to share from your own point of view, this peace. So once again, if you'd like to share this, you can wave your hand. I think Kashi wants to share. Maybe she's just share, sharing, shaking her hand. Would you like to share, Kashi, as Some you took your hand in the wrong moment? Or yeah, right that's moment? okay. So yeah, I can. Can you speak and then we see? Oh, right. I have had some some really strong glimpses that I really felt a deep peace and love and oneness and deep serenity, silence. Um, but in the so in these Zoom meetings, then I also noticed that. Very quickly, my mind is is really silent. Then there is not always that completely strong energy, but there is there is an yeah a silence. So the glimpses that was really yeah overwhelming, um, but. I noticed now after five years here in the community that my mind is much more easy, easily, yeah, quiet in silence. And uh, that gives, yeah, more, more peace for, but yeah, it, yeah. The, quality or the intensity is different from the big uh, the glimpses which were so overwhelming it's clear yeah yeah so i mean i've observed you being very very quiet and i know that's possible for you and <clears throat> now your um next step is to bring that into your daily life yeah so mm -hmm. you probably have moments in your daily life when this peace comes but there are many moments when you get caught up with some yeah yeah busyness mind. or a chaotic yeah. nurse or um mm -hmm. yeah you get lost in some situation yeah so that's that's the challenge now and uh mm -hmm. I mean, this is just a natural challenge that comes out of the work that you've been doing for the last years mm -hmm. and the priority that you've made in your life. So it's all natural, natural. Mm -hmm. it, it takes years, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so maybe one of our guests would like 
like to share. We've got quite a lot of faces that I'm not uh, familiar with. Somebody like to share from the guests. I might have to choose somebody if you don't want anybody doesn't want to share. Okay, so we have a very uh, uh, we have a very nice volunteer who recently arrived in our Spanish house uh, unexpectedly. I think it was unexpectedly for him and also unexpectedly for us. And I'm told that he. Um, is very familiar with Ramin Mahashi. He comes from France, mm -hmm. and um, he knows he knows India well. I, I I think I was told he knows India very well, and mm -hmm. uh, whatever reason he hasn't been for some years there, but he's somehow shown up in our community in Spain, been volunteering, very helpful, being very helpful. Would you like to share? Um, Yes. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yes. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Would you like to share about this subject of peace? Yes. Um, well, during the meditation, uh, I was uh, mostly focused on sensation. And I had a kind of a different sensation in the neck, in the stomach. Uh, were not so um, were not so uh, comfortable or nice, and then slowly, slowly, uh, everything changed into one big sensation, very uh, um, very gentle. You can say. Sorry, I don't have a lot of words in English, so I'm searching my word. Uh, um, and uh, I felt it's coming from up and it's going to the heart and it's where I fulfill all my body. And uh, I can say this is peace. I have the feeling I felt really at peace at this moment. But uh, after, um, just when you were sharing about um, to find peace in our life, and um, do theater or meditation and this. Um, I had a little problem with, uh, I have no problem with doing all these things, but uh, is the, the, the problem that I found is then uh, uh, at some time I was searching for peace. I wanted it. And I met a lot of, of a different uh, teachers where she say, uh, they were saying, oh, you don't have to search anything. The, the one who is searching is the problem. And so it was very confusing for me because I want to put energy in the meditation and I want to find peace. And in the same time, if I do it, if I really want it, I'm, this is the most barrier to find peace. So it's kind of paradox because, yeah, um, it, as you say, you know, it, one of the barriers is a lot of wanting or desiring for something like peace, which is our essence. So, if we, I mean, I, in my own case, when I first came to India to a spiritual master when I was around 30 years old, this master he talked a lot about enlightenment. And uh, I didn't know anything about spiritual things or meditation or enlightenment, but he convinced me that this was a kind of a spiritual gold medal, and I really wanted to get that. So I kind of gave up my regular life, stayed in an ashram in India, and looked for this enlightenment. And of course, the, the wanting, as you say, the, the sort of desiring and wanting for something like enlightenment or wanting peace is a kind of barrier. So over many years, I, in a way, was sabotaging myself without realizing that I was sabotaging myself. And at the same time, out of my desire to get this kind of gold medal of enlightenment, 
I was also achieving some benef benefits <clears throat> because by the master talking about enlightenment, something that seemed attractive, I was able to give up my uh, prior life and I was able to do a lot of meditation. And out of all this meditation, uh, something started to change inside me. And so then I got some glimpses of true true peace. And of course, as you as you rightly say, some there's something like a paradox happening because you know the wanting for peace is also a sabotage because who is wanting? Who is wanting? And our nature, our true nature, the true <clears throat> nature of every human being is peace and love. It's our essence. So this is a little bit of a paradox because if you don't have some kind of, um, if you like ego that's wanting to get something, if you don't have that, then for sure, probably you're not going to meditate. You're not going to um, work with yourself and become quiet. You're probably not going to do that because the world is like a huge toy shop. There's so many exciting toys to play with and so many good experiences to have, why would I want to sit somewhere with my eyes closed? Seems a little silly. So, um, yeah, as I say, it's a bit of a paradox, yeah. So what to do? Huh? What to do? Well, because... I think you continue to do what you're doing, you know. And yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about you, but it seems that your doing took you to India, took you maybe to different spiritual masters. There you've got some understanding maybe you didn't have before. Maybe you did some meditation. Uh, maybe in their presence, you found it easier to come to um, yourself. And so you got a benefit. Yeah, out, of, out of your kind of egoistic wish uh, to change your life or to to get something you didn't have before, uh, you've got then a great benefit. And then at a certain certain time, um, there needs to be an understanding of what is really true. And what is really true is that you know everybody is already enlightened. Everybody's essence is enlightened. Everybody's essence is peace. And when you start to realize that, then of course, um, the doing tends to drop away. You realize that, uh, like I said in the meditation, don't try to change anything. Mm. So normally we are, we are trying to change something because we heard that, you know, if you're a spiritual person, you shouldn't think too much. So then when we start thinking, we try to kind of stop the thoughts. And if you've ever tried to stop the thoughts, you know perfectly well that that doesn't really work. If you start trying to stop the thoughts, what's what is it that's trying to stop the thoughts? It's the same same mind that you know is having the thoughts. So mm -hmm. this this never works. It never works. But many many beginners on the spirit in the spiritual life they tend to do that. And in my own case, I also did that for some years. I would think. Mm -hmm before I realized that this is, in a way, a joke. What I found difficult is uh, during the meditation uh, I had, uh, I see my mind is uh, trying to sneak out, to find strategy, to, to feel comfortable or to... And this is... Um, I start to see it now and um, yeah yeah that's it yeah so it is okay you know it's okay because even from our short meditation you saw something you saw how your mind is trying to do something and this is awareness and as we become more aware about the way our mind is is kind of trying to get us then um, the more we get free of the mind, actually. And mm -hmm. this whole process takes some longer time, takes some years, really. Mm. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. So. So, is there another guest who would like to share something? Okay, so uh, I see that um, VJ is sitting there with Hannah Mann. Uh, maybe you can see their names. Hannah Mann and the man with the white hair is VJ. And he was recently living with us in Spain, in the community in Spain, and helping us develop that community. And now he's gone back to Ukraine and I... I guess maybe tomorrow he's going to go and visit his family, who he hasn't seen for about a year now. And he has had many such experiences of peace. So would you like to share something, Vijay? No, but I'm... <clears throat> It's difficult to say. Sorry? It's difficult to say. Difficult to say, yes. But you can say something. <laughs> but it's very difficult. Просто в моменте находиться и все, больше ничего. Just to stay in moment and that's all. Но не сразу приходит это все. And it comes uh, not from the beginning, but uh, after some time. I think, VJ, you become more Ukrainian since this the last week or two. Виджей, ты похож больше на украина, на украинцев спустя эти там неделю две, как ты вернулся. When you were here with us, you could share more easily. Когда ты был здесь uh, с нами, то ты мог поделиться более легко с тем, что с тобой происходит. Может быть, не знаю. Maybe I don't know. But if you if you look at his face, you can get a very good. Um... How can I say? Maybe you can get a bit better idea from looking at his face than you can from his uh, way of trying to explain. Возможно, если вы посмотрите на его лицо, вы поймете, в принципе, что он имеет в виду, даже без попытки объяснить, что с ним происходит. So, so this is one of the things that's also a kind of paradox that. Something that is extremely beautiful, so beautiful, um, it's very hard to talk about it. И в этом заключается парадокс, потому что когда с тобой происходит что-то действительно такое красивое, тебе об этом очень сложно говорить. Because in some ways this experience is beyond words. Потому что этот опыт он uh, за любыми словами, за любого beyond... понимания. Beyond thought. За пониманием любых мыслей. Да. And this is, uh, you know, some poets. Yes. Who are living in their peace, they try to explain it in their in the, They try to explain it in their poem. Есть некоторые поэты, которые, в принципе, через свои поэмы и пытаются объяснить состояние. I, I remember a Japanese poet called Basho. Uh, японский поэт или поэтесса. So he was a kind uh, of Basho. Zen poet. И он, в принципе, понимал, о чем идет речь. Yeah. I, I, I don't really remember his poem, but I'm going to make my own poem. It's a bit like it could be his poem. Я не очень помню, о чем он конкретно писал, но я сделаю свою поэму о том, что я, в принципе, знаю. Something like, 
throwing the stone into the lake. Когда кто-то бросает камень в озеро. Fall. Клёп. I don't know if there's any other poems, poets here who like to do better than I do. Я не знаю, может быть, кто-то другой знает более лучшие поэмы, чем я только что составил, сочинил. So certain kinds of spiritual poets, they try to express what's not really able, you, which is not really able to be expressed by their poems. И на самом деле очень многие поэты такого рода, они пытаются показать тебе вот эти вот мелочи, которые происходят и на которые ты не обращаешь внимания. Yes. Ага. Okay, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> There you are. You see this this chuckling and this is BJ's poem. Чак, то есть мешки это твоя поэма, поэма BJ. Okay, so uh, somebody else like to share? I think Aditi, okay, Aditi. Aditi likes to share. If you say something, then you come onto the screen. Aditi? Um, ich würde gerne was teilen. Um, seit einem Jahr bin ich ja in dieser Community von November vergangenen Jahres erste Mal. Eigentlich möchte also, ich was teilen. Ich habe ganz ja. viel Erfahrung in der Zeit gemacht und ganz viel Frieden erfahren. We have a translator. So since November last year, I have contact to the community. And I experienced a lot of peace since then. Und so in der Familie mit meinen Söhnen, ich habe vorher viel dran gearbeitet, viel Vergebung. Aber in diesem Jahr ist so viel Frieden geschehen. Also um, in my families with my sons, I worked a lot on this before. I did a lot of forgiveness. But in this year, so much happened. Ja, ich glaube ja, du bist ja eine erfahrene spirituelle Person. You've done a lot of work uh, for many years. Du hast seit vielen Jahren viel Arbeit gemacht. And somehow in contact to our community where there's a group of people who've been living together for a number of years. Und in Kontakt mit der Gemeinschaft, wo eine Gruppe von Leuten ist, die seit einigen Jahren oder vielen Jahren ja schon zusammenleben. When you visit us, you, you get a kind of support for your own peace. Wenn du uns besuchst, das ist wie so eine Unterstützung für deinen eigenen inneren Frieden. So Aditi is part of a group that meets every three months with, with John David for a weekend. Also die Adite ist Teil einer Gruppe, die sich alle drei Monate mit John David für ein Wochenende trifft. And these weekends tend to be a kind of, uh, I don't know the right way to describe it, but energetically, usually very quickly when we meet together, uh, we come into a deep meeting with each other. Und diese Wochenenden, ich kann das nicht genau beschreiben, aber wenn wir uns äh, treffen, dann gibt es energetisch eine sehr tiefe Begegnung zwischen uns. A small group about maybe 12 people. Das ist eine kleine Gruppe von vielleicht ungefähr zwölf Personen. And then when you go back to your own life, you, you have a certain kind of charge, a recharging. It's like a recharging your energy or something like that. I don't know how to express it really. Und wenn du dann zurück in dein Leben gehst, das ist so, als ob die Batterie aufgeladen wurde. Yeah. Yes. Wie die Batterie aufgeladen, aber also auch was Identifizierungen loslassen. Ich bin dann irgendwo äh, 
Die Identifizierung als Mutter, die Rolle, wo du vorhin das sagtest, Rollen spielen. Und ich konnte plötzlich von dieser ganzen Konditionierung, diesen Rollen, Mutter wie ich zu sein habe, wie meine Söhne zu sein haben, loslassen. Ja, yeah, but also to let go of the uh, identifications. I could let go of the role of the mother and of all these ideas, how a mother should be or how my son should be. Right, right. I mean, this this brings up another thing that's rather interesting, and that is, you know, in a, in a kind of family situation, if one person works on themselves, if one person kind of transforms uh, their structures, becomes quiet, actually you then have an effect on all the close people around you. Ja, also das ist ja was in einer Familie, wenn eine Person anfängt sich zu verändern, wenn eine Person stiller wird, das hat eine Wirkung auf alle Leute um dich herum. Ja. Vorher war es so eine Theorie, das Wissen theoretisch, aber das Ja hat mich unheimlich weitergebracht. Dieses nicht nur als ein Konzept, eine Theorie, sondern es kam von innen heraus. Before I knew it theoretically, but this year really brought it forward. It was not a concept anymore. It came from deeply inside. Right, right. Yeah, because you, you, you're ready for that. Yeah, weil du dafür bereit bist. I mean, in one way we can say that the spiritual work is now. You know, it happens now. But in another way we have to understand that there there is a kind of journey and this journey takes time and we start off in the kindergarten then we go to the primary school and the secondary school and the university and now you come to the phd class you know also spirituelle arbeit ist einerseits geschieht spiritualität immer jetzt aber andererseits können wir auch verstehen dass es sowas gibt wie den kindergarten die grundschule die weiterführende schule die uni und du bist jetzt so irgendwie im Doktorstudiengang. Something like that. So ähnlich. And uh, Aditi, Aditi is a bit brave because in a, in a month's time she's coming with us to India. Also die Aditi die ist mutig, weil in einem Monat kommt sie mit uns nach Indien. And of course this is going to be a very strong experience for you. Und das wird für sie natürlich eine sehr starke Erfahrung sein. Because uh, going to a different culture Weil eben zu einer anderen Kultur zu gehen, is already strong. Das ist schon sehr intensiv. It's like you immediately get new, new mirrors to know yourself. Du bekommst direkt neue Spiegel, um dir selbst zu begegnen. And uh, we're going to a very particular place in South India. Und wir gehen ja an einen besonderen Ort in Südindien. Is that there is a mountain called Arunachala. Da gibt es ja einen Berg, der heißt Arunachala. And most of us, when we go there, once a year, we go every year for some time, uh, people can feel the energy of this mountain. Und die meisten, die da hingehen, die können die Energie von dem Berg fühlen. And the, the Indian spiritual people consider this mountain to be the heart chakra of the whole planet. Und für die Inder ist dieser Berg das Herzchakra des ganzen Planeten. So they call this in Shiva. Die nennen den Berg Shiva. And this is, of course is one of the famous Indian gods. Das ist einer der bekannten indischen Götter. And this mountain is representing that particular god. Und dieser Berg repräsentiert diesen Gott. And so many people are attracted to come to that mountain. Und viele Menschen werden von diesem Berg angezogen. And when he was about 17 years old, Ramana Maharshi was drawn to come to that mountain. Und als Ramana Maharshi 17 Jahre alt war, hat ihn, fühlte er sich von diesem Berg angezogen. And he lived his whole life on, on or close to that mountain. Und er lebte sein ganzes Leben an diesem Berg. And we are staying in another ashram, but it's close to his ashram. 
Und wir leben in einem Ashram, der sehr nah an seinem Ashram ist. And of course, in his ashram, the, the management has kept a very silent energy in, in that ashram. Und in seinem Ashram, die, die den leiten, die haben da ja eine sehr stille Energie quasi so gehalten. Yeah. So you're, you're almost certainly going to have a strong experience when you come with us to India. Du wirst sicherlich dort starke, starke Erfahrungen machen, wenn du mit uns nach Indien kommst. Right. Okay, good, good. So I, I would like to, um, to finish by kind of applying what we've been talking about. Ich möchte gerne Peace. aufhören, äh, ja, schließen, indem ich oder spreche worüber wir geredet haben. I'm going to talk about the situation with Israel and Palestine. Die Situation in Israel und Palästina sprechen. So I'm going to get myself into trouble now. So this situation between the Israelis and the Palestinians started in 1948. At that time, of course, we all know this, there was a terrible situation in Europe and many Jewish people were slaughtered and this is known as the Holocaust. Millions of Jewish people were put into concentration camps and murdered. So, of course, this was a terrible tragedy, terrible situation for the Jewish people. And after the war, when um, England and America together had become victorious, there was a very strong, perhaps we can say guilty feeling, or maybe there was a very strong compassion towards these people. And so it was decided that Palestine, which at that time was being uh, the government of Palestine was the it was England, the English and the Americans got together and decided that they give half of the land to the Jewish people and half of the land to the Palestine people. But this was never agreed that the Palestinian people never agreed to give half of their land to the Jewish people. But England and America had the power at those times. They had the power. And so they, they decided it like that. And against the wishes of the Palestine people, the Israeli, well, the Jewish people came and created Israel. And, you know, there's a history, a very strong history that's been going on now for 75, about 75 years. And during those 75 years, there's been many situations uh, like the one that's going on now in Gaza. So, of course, we know that something like three weeks ago, suddenly, unexpectedly, on an on a, on Israeli holiday, which happened to be the 50th anniversary of the biggest war between the two countries. And well, the two peoples, not the two countries, but the two peoples. It was exactly 50 years. And um, in the recent months, the, um, there have been several of the local countries like Saudi Arabia, for example, who were about to become friendly uh, or to create a peace agreement with the Israelis. So the People in uh, Gaza, uh, they call themselves Hamas, they decided to attack the uh, Israel. And uh, in, a, in a kind of shocking way, they uh, came into Israel and slaughtered many people. I think it's about one and a half thousand people. They slaughtered them and they did it in a very horrible way. So there were many, um, I don't know how to describe them, but completely uh, obscene um, ways of killing people. 
they did horrible things. And they also captured about 250 people as hostages and took them back to Gaza. So this was an enormous shock to the Jewish people. They've had many other wars between the Palestine people and their own people. There's been regular, uh, regular wars. But this particular situation that happened three weeks ago uh, somehow was a, a very particular shock to the Israeli people. And as you probably know, out of that, the Israelis have gone to war with Hamas, who they describe as a terrorist organization in Gaza. And in Gaza is a very small bit of land with two million people living, very crowded together. And of course, the Israelis started to bomb this land, this Gaza. And if you want, you can follow this because it's kind of been headline news all through the month. And this is continuing. And uh, it seems that uh, now uh, the Israelis, some of the Israeli soldiers have been killed. And a lot of people who live in Gaza, apparently maybe as many as 8,000 people, have been killed, and many of those people who've been killed are children. Two or three thousand of the eight thousand apparently are children. So it's a very ghastly and terrible situation for the Palestinian people and for the Israeli people. And I have an opinion, and my opinion is that the Israeli people have to be very careful what they're creating now. Because when, when this attack happened, basically it was young Palestinian people, maybe around 20, 25 years old, young men who came into Israel and slaughtered people. And they did it with tremendous um, rage, tremendous anger, you could say. And when I heard about this anger, it seemed to me that these people who have such a big anger, they must be the children of the fathers and the grandfathers who fought in the other wars. Because somehow when there's no peace, it gets passed through the generations. And now there's a new generation is being prepared out of this war to start another war in maybe 20, 30 years time. And this has been happening for the last 75 years. So, of course, uh, right now, it's natural that the Israeli people would like to attack this, what they call terrorist group. Uh, but, of course, uh, other people don't consider them a terrorist group. They see them as a people who are trying to... Um, trying to deal with their sort of tragic situation. Because over the last 75 years, step by step by step, the Americans and Europeans have been supporting Israel step by step to take over the land which was given to the Palestinian people. So recently, by chance, I looked on the map, on the internet, of what's called the West Bank. So the West Bank is one area which was given to the Palestinian people, and Gaza was another part given to the um, Palestinian people. And in the West Bank, I was shocked to discover, and you can discover this yourself, that the Israeli people gradually have been building settlements where, I don't know, a group of, a group of Israeli people they build some apartments, they create maybe like a village. And now there are many, many of these villages built all over the West Bank. And the, through that process, which isn't a legal process, but the Americans and the Europeans have allowed the Israelis, they've not prevented the Israelis from building these settlements. You slowly, slowly, there's been created a kind of totally hopeless situation for the Palestinian people. And hence the rage, hence the horrible 
um, situation three weeks ago when they came into Israel. And of course, now Israel themselves are in a rage and now they're attacking Gaza. And as I say, this has been happening every many years. There's been many wars and there's no peace. And the people in, in Gaza and the people in Israel, they don't have this quality of peace that I've been talking about tonight and which some of you have been experiencing tonight. It's clear that the people in charge of both uh, groups, they have no peace. In fact, they have the opposite of peace. They are in a rage. They believe themselves to be a mind-body organism, and they're in a rage, and they feel all kind of ideas that direct them to fight. And as I say, this fighting has been going on uh, for maybe 75 years. And it seems to me that unless some kind of peace is established quite soon, then both countries, both peoples are creating a situation which is going to lead after some period of quiet is going to lead to another war. And it seems to me that Israel, as the much more powerful of the two groups, has got to understand the psychology that they're creating by what's happening at the moment. Because what's happening at the moment is devastating for the people that live in Gaza. The ordinary people who live there, they're running out of water, they're running out of food, they're not allowed to leave, they're completely blockaded in this very small land. Egypt doesn't want them to come to Egypt. And so they're just kind of stuck there. And I think gradually every day, more and more people are getting uh, killed there, including, as I was saying, many children. So in this situation, if it continues to go on, it seems to me inevitable at some point, the war will stop. But then in 20 or 30 years time, it's almost inevitable there'll be another round of wars. So I don't know what can happen, but it seems to me that the only possibility for both countries is to come together in some agreement, which can be called a peace agreement. And for a peace agreement, both groups of people have got to feel satisfied and um, have got to be left to run their own affairs and to hopefully gradually be able to live together in a new peaceful relationship, which they never managed to achieve uh, in the last 75 years. It seems to me deeply sad. And I must admit over the last three weeks, I've been feeling inside my system a deep sadness because this is, this is the, the situation of humanity, you can say. This is the reality of most of humanity. Because unfortunately, most of humanity are not very conscious. They're not very conscious. And it was very touching tonight that in the sharings from the beginning of the meeting, it seems that many of you, in fact, are conscious and have the capacity to come to your own inner essence. So this is very touching for me. And I would say this is this essence, coming to this essence, is exactly the, the whole point of deciding uh, to live in a spiritual way. The spiritual way is moment to moment in the now, the now of the moment. So I don't know if anybody is now being provoked and would like to say something. We have a few moments. Uh, somebody likes to speak. Or maybe we leave it like that. Somebody likes to share something, it's uh, available.
yeah, I think you. Has she? Is that has she? Okay. Uh, clearly, and I think there is also a lot of religious, yeah, religious aspirations with people have to let go. But there was one point of light what I saw uh, on a little movie. There is a place in Israel where already 70 years long, Palestinian and Israeli live in peace together. When the Israeli came there, built their kibbutz, the Palestinian helped them to make uh, how to do agriculture. And since 70 years, they live there in peace, but it is a little, little flame in a dark surround. Right. But I oh. find that very beautiful. But people have to let go all the enemies' conceptions about each other and conceptions of this is all our land or, you know, big Israel or something. But yeah. I find that very beautiful that it, it's, but it is, yeah, very dark situation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Somebody else like to, to share something? Okay. Ah, okay. Pavati. Pavati, if you speak, you come onto the screen. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. So I feel also very, very deep sadness in one way. And in the other way, it's encouraged me more and more that what we are doing here and to even go stronger for this, like to hold against this war and not to think too much about how horrible is it all there uh, because then I come really in struggle with myself ne? because I can't do really something and when I want to do something I can really look for my own peace and uh, to encourage other people to come to this place yeah well I think I think that's the reason why we've been living together for the last 20 years why we created a community because the community provides a kind of oasis in the middle of Europe where people can gather in a kind of safe environment and can do the spiritual work and can uh, as you say as you suggest they can come to their own inner peace and um, what else can we do as human beings if we don't if we can't make ourselves more conscious as a as a human race, then we're going to destroy ourselves. I mean, this is in the moment is very clear in other ways. For example, the way we are destroying the na natural world, the way we are so much destroying it that we're maybe heating the planet to such an extent that um, it's going to soon be maybe impossible to um how can i say to avoid creating very strange um uh, wind patterns rain patterns fire patterns the whole environment is starting to be affected yeah and you know we're doing this in a very unconscious way we've can we've created a society based mainly on making money and not on any kind of wish to live in the harmony of course mm. so this is uh, yeah it's very destructive so the answer to that what is the answer you can go and plant some trees that creates more oxygen so that's one practical behavior but maybe the most profound behavior is to decide to become more conscious because when when somebody becomes more conscious that leads to other people also being touched and becoming more conscious so in my own case i've spent actually um actually nearly 50 years 
with the intention to create John David into somebody who is more conscious. 50 years ago, I wasn't very conscious. And now I would say I'm much more conscious. And open the Open Sky House has created now a, a kind of um, oasis and everybody is invited. The gate, the door is open. That's why we call it Open Sky House, Open Sky. Everybody's invited. And of course, many people are coming and maybe many people are going. So it's a sort of coming and going situation. And um, some of us are deciding to stay and be together. And this decision to stay and be together creates a strong energy field, which other people can benefit from, as Aditi was just sharing, that by her coming here into this energy field, she sees that she got a lot of benefits. So this is something we can clearly, consciously decide to do. It's not going to solve the problem of Israel and um, the Palestinians because we have no political power. And maybe we don't have any interest in political power. But we can, we can realize in our own daily lives how we ourselves can offer some kind of uh, compassion into the world. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe one more person. Is there somebody else who likes to share? Maybe another guest. I think some of our guests have, have left us now. <laughs> anybody uh, anybody else like to share? Okay. So I would like to announce something because uh, as people know, Ohm is uh, a super designer and very technically connected. And so recently he set up on, you know, this uh, website called Twitter. I never understood what is Twitter, but I'm rather uh, interested in Elon Musk. And so by um, reading his recent biography, I came in contact with Twitter, which now he calls X. He's, he's taken over the company. He's renamed it as X. And just recently, Ohm has made a, I don't know what it's called, an account or something for John David. And we're posting up kind of interesting things. Uh, tomorrow he'll post up some part of this meeting and we posted up some films that Carly made and some quotes from Ramana Mahashi. So if you're interested to follow me on X, you can, you can find me under John David Now. John David Now. So if you go to John David Now on X, you can see some comments from me. And we can we can follow each other. You can make a comment. You can uh, tell your friends. I don't know exactly how it all works, but it's a new game for me. I quite like this new game. And then the other thing I just like to remind you that um, we have a group now that's come together who's going to India, and we're going on the uh, with the retreat starts on the. 7th of December, is that right? No, no, 17th, 17th of December and continues until the 7th of January. And this year is a little bit different because normally we go after the new year in January, the whole of January. And we thought we would try going during Christmas and New Year. So some people get a holiday in that period. So it, it seems that it gives more people a chance to come this year. And if it's interesting for anybody in the meeting tonight, you can get in touch with Indira. And we still have some places. So several of you are coming. Aditi is coming. Uh, Jaya is coming. Um, maybe Vijay is going to come. We're not quite sure. And um, everybody's welcome.
everybody's welcome. It's always an amazing experience, this retreat. Okay, okay. So, okay, thank you very much. And next Thursday, at the same time, there will be another meeting. I'm planning to do these meetings until the middle of December when we go to India. Okay, thank you, thank you.